Indigenous girls have stories to tell about their experiences living in Canada. Growing up in a country forged by violence, Indigenous girls have something to say about centuries of dispossession and domination carried out by white settlers. These girls have something to say about being forced to attend Indian residential schools and later coerced into contemporary educational boarding arrangements. If you were willing to listen, they would tell you about the 60s scoop that scattered them across the globe and today's child welfare system that rotates them through foster care homes, group houses, and hotels until they are aged out. They might even describe the complex series of prison pipelines that led Indigenous youth to make up 43% of correctional service admissions. Pipelines that look like being trailed down shopping aisles by rent-a-cops, or the eyes that follow you down a suburban street and tell you to keep moving if you don't want trouble. No doubt these girls can tell you about surviving and succumbing to biological warfare, starvation tactics, medical experimentation, and all the other strategies Canada has deployed to claim this land. Too often, Indigenous girls disappear, and the ones left behind must make sense without their stories. In the last 30 years, we have increasingly turned to legal inquests and inquiries to make sense of these disappearances. The thing is, Canada has its own agenda that is reflected in these legal narratives. Even though these inquests and inquiries offer important insights, Indigenous girls, women, transgender, two-spirit, and non-binary folks remain subject to prejudice and discrimination within the Canadian legal system. Most of the time, these accounts of violence remain incomplete without stories of resourcefulness, resilience, and relationships. Indigenous girls have stories to tell about the vibrancy of living, stories about taking flight through dance, stories about laughing with siblings and cousins, stories about their favorite colors, foods, and animals, stories about treasured memories, hopes, and dreams. In order to support these girls' dreams and to address settler colonial gender-based violence that has claimed so many other Indigenous girls' lives, we need to listen to the stories of those girls still with us, as well as those adults who survived indigenous girlhood under settler colonialism. Writers, poets, and playwrights like Tasha Spillett, Katharina Vermette, Tracy Lindbergh, Beatrice Colton Moisener, Eden Robinson, Marilyn Dumont, Dawn Dumont, Cherie Dimeline, and Maria Campbell have shed greater light on indigenous girls' experiences. In telling our own stories, we can access justice, healing, and liberation. Indigenous girls have stories to tell about their experiences living in Canada. It's time for us to listen.